This is the largest gift, is it not? Uh, that uh, a single gift that you have given up to this point. Is that not right? Yes, that's correct. But we uh, utilized two Eccles foundations of the seven uh, because they were specific uh, to the medical aspect of it hmm. and, uh, and getting into research. So that's how it kind of narrowed down to that. And then we were guided by the needs of the university that we could see and what President uh, Watkins uh, outlined hmm. and Dr. Good. And from there we just grew and uh, ended up putting the two foundations together to make the biggest gift together that we've ever, ever made to the University of Utah. Whose idea was this? I don't know, it just seemed like it, uh, it just manifest destiny, it just came upon us. Did, did they call you and say, hey, you know, we really could use a new medical school? Well, yeah. I think that um, our giving, our family's giving, um, an interest in health sciences really started back in 1965 when my grandfather and grandmother and dad gave the, the first seed money for the health science library here on campus, here up here on the hill. And that is named for my grandfather. So in 1965, that really started kind of this tradition of giving back, giving to the University of Utah in an area of health sciences and medicine that impacts all of our lives. But somebody had to have the idea, you know, we need a new medical school over at the U. Um, we could do something, you know. Well, did that happen at the foundation level or did oh. Dr. Watkins call you up and say, oh, hey, dream. you know? Well, I think um, it started with a dream. President Watkins had a dream yeah. of a new medical school here. Um, the current medical school was built 50 60 years ago and has really seen its full useful life, if I put it delicately. And they needed a new medical school, but they also wanted to have a transformational gift that not only built a facility, but powered the programs and the people inside. And so we also have a component for an endowment that will help recruit faculty from across the country, in, in specialists in their fields, that we can help with scholarships and in, encourage the best and the brightest stu medical students to come here. Um, that we can grow the class size so we can do, educate more physicians. We have a shortage here in the state. So there was an incredible need uh, th that uh, President Watkins and Dr. Good saw and they brought it to, to our family. They also, of course, the third component of all of that is research. Uh, research is an economic driver but it's also in, uh, pushing the boundaries of knowledge and when you have the experts and the cutting edge research being done here, then you can provide even better he medical care to all the people of our state. So President Watkins approached us. I think that we've been working on this for a year or two, um, talking through the issues and, and how it would work and why it was so important. And she convinced us of that critical need. And we saw it ourselves. We need more physicians to out in our rural areas. We have such a shortage. So. Um, and so it was going to be a new medical school building also and then uh, we saw an opportunity uh, with the guidance from President Watkins and, uh, and Dr. Good to uh, use that as part of the funding to make it happen uh, because the need was there and uh, this was an old building and now this starts off and that building will be finished and 24, and uh, then all these things that we're talking about, the innovations that come from the research, the new way of uh, delivering medical services, a lot of, a lot of development has been made uh, just uh, with COVID-19 uh, trauma mm -hmm. on the industry. Mm -hmm. But that's the, the, the essence of how we got into the uh, starting to make it really happen, and and uh, President Wat Watkins and Dr. Good were there, uh, guiding, guiding us. Not to get too technical, but when you <coughs> give at this level, 
you say this has been going on for a year and a half. You know, what has been going on? I mean, how does that work? Can you kind of walk me through? Okay, we are putting together a plan to uh, to give a large gift. What does that entail? I mean, what do you do from 18 months ago to now? Well, okay. well in, in part, it's what does this building look like? What's it going to do inside? That was our question. What will we do with the endowment? We want this to be transformational. We don't want to just give money that will be used up and finished. How do we give on to the generations that come, bef that w how do we give to the generations that are going to continue to come? So a lot of it was a discussion about what does this mean? What is the vision and the mission for this kind of gift? What will it do for the people of this state? And what is its purpose? And those conversations, while easy at a 30,000 level, are a little tougher. We got down to the nuts and bolts of how these funds would be used and and how we were going to increase the class size of, of the medical school, how we could reach out to our other communities. So that's part of the discussion, I think, that took some time. Hmm. Lisa, you may. No, and I, th I think we were also studying how we can make a lasting difference for the people of Utah and for our health care that we enjoy in this state. And th it really came down to this is the pivotal moment we are shifting from this incredible history that the medical school has, has in its past, these incredible um, faculty and giants of science that were, that were um, part of establishing the medical school in the first place, in the early part of the last century. So we're pivoting from that to the future and saying, what does a contemporary medical school need we need the students, we need scholarships, we need to be out in every part of the state um, with our physicians and make sure rural health care is, is addressed and low-income health care and to benefit all Utahns. And in addition, it's interesting because the university, and Ruth, Ruth reminds me of this, she really calls it the crown jewel of the university. And it is the only academic medical school within a four-state um, area, and it serves about 10% of the geographic area of the United States. Yeah. It, is, it is so profound that we build upon what, what has taken place here. And it's just this perfect storm of, of timing where we want to make a difference for the people of Utah. And that will bring us uh, well, up uh, in the, the the really preeminent medical schools in the United States. That's really important. And then the research will help with the innovation of what it is that we deliver. And uh, also the method of delivery. And we've learned a lot about a method of delivery during uh, uh, COVID-19, you see. And a lot of the delivery has changed. So we're going to be part of that that will come out of moving into this new facility and utilizing uh, the organizational structure that will result. And then the increase in the endowment, which is flexible for taking care of the scholarships and doing the uh, cutting edge, uh, really exciting research also. So that's part and parcel of the moving parts that we saw and that were being explained to us by Dr. Good and, and by President Watkins. When, About four minutes, four to five minutes. Okay. When you consider the lives that are going to be changed because of this gift, specifically this gift, I mean, we're talking about the endowment, we're talking about the research, we're talking about the physical facility, Mm -hmm. And when you go down the row from the faculty to the student to ultimately the patient yeah. at the end of the row, what do you envision for them? What are your hopes for the patient? Well, of course, the expertise is the first thing that is going to come out of this medical school. With these students learning and training 
with state-of-the-art simulation labs and yeah. other technology, things that, w that we didn't even have 10 or 15 years ago. So the, the method of teaching and training is going to be enhanced. And that's going to that's gonna translate to better care, more wellness and health in our state, and I think, I think success for the, for the medical industry in Utah and beyond. Mr. Eccles. And that, that's going to be delivered through enlarging the graduating class, educating more doctors, taking on more residents coming uh, from other uh, medical schools around the country, and then the research that is uh, expanded, and the flexibility delivered by this 40 million that we're going to put into the endowment uh, uh, of the university, which is 227 million, mm. and it's not the biggest by a long sight in the United States, but this will take it to, to uh, up 40 million to 267 million, and that's really very important. And in measuring the size and scope of the uh, and the reputation going forward of the medical school here uh, in the state of Utah at this university, two last questions. Please talk to me, because uh, I consider you the grand master <laughs> okay. of this uh, topic. Talk to me about the stewardship of wealth and your responsibilities that way, and your feelings about the stewardship that you have over the wealth that your family has accumulated. Stewardship is a powerful word, and when you think we came from Scotland in 1863 without a shirt on our back and no education and walked across the, the from from uh, uh, St. Louis all the way to Salt Lake and up Ogden Canyon to Ogden Valley and uh, it was really tough time out here when we were lucky they had no skill no education we were just lucky to get a loan from the perpetual immigration fund of the, of the LDS church that, that converted them when they knocked on the door in Scotland so the, the, the wealth was built from that time forward without very much in the way of education except learning on the job work. And David Eccles died in 12 and, and his estate then went to uh, the uh, nine children of, of this part of the Eccles clan. And from there, they developed, managed the, the, uh, the assets, grew the assets, and uh, then use them effectively and reinvest it and, and reinvest it and move forward until they were able to make a difference in a lot of different areas. And this is the last most important area for us because it's, it's medicine and that's the whole key to everybody because that comes back to health and that comes back to the population, the everyday man in this country. Go ahead, Katie. Well, I don't want to cut off your question, but my grandfather gave the fir fir one of the first early gifts to the medicals, to the health sciences, for the library. And years later, all the Eccles family have contributed up here for to help build this side of the campus. My parents contributed for this building, the health science education building. And between this building and my grandfather's library is a bridge, a physical bridge. But my father dubbed it the Generation Bridge. And it is both a physical and a symbolic bridge of the generations. And it's a look back, as my father always does, a look back with gratitude to those who came before, paved the way, set a pattern of giving, and then looking forward with optimism to the future, to the next generations who will benefit from that and will pick up the mantle and continue to give in any way that they can and wherever they are. Let's pause there because that's awesome, and we can go downstairs and get pictures of that bridge. Okay. I didn't mean to cut Bob. you. I cut Bob. Bob has one more Can I ask Bob. one last question? When you look back on the impact that you have had on the lives of literally millions of people, and you add generally, generationally the impact that your family has had on the lives of millions of people, hmm. what kind of feelings does that conjure up in your heart? Hmm. Well, first of all, uh, stunned 
and overwhelmed and then thinking of the responsibility of having wealth and utilizing it effectively uh, and successfully, uh, that's, that's what makes you know that this is a very responsible position to be and you've got to do a good job at it for the benefit of, of uh, all the people. And that's what we see, and that is, um, that is a, a simple way of understanding that you've got responsibility. And we've been through depressions, and we've been through two world wars, and, and uh, uh, all the other things, and the asset base has continued to grow. Uh, and that means it has continued to deliver what we can do to improve the quality of life for everybody, for us and the people in Utah.